Good morning, guys and gals. I'm Pal, and welcome back to Pikmin 2. Last time, we defeated the first boss in HD. This time, we're going back to Awakening Wood with our reinforced number of purple Pikmin to enter the White Flower Garden, which is a cave that we unearthed, haha, <laughs> pun, last or yesterday. I need to stop saying last episode because it's days. They're not episodes. What are you talking about? This is not a series. This is real life. It's a documentary about my survival on this strange planet, which is actually just my planet. But there's really nothing I, I need to do, or there are no options available to me right now other than that cave. So, what is this? The first two? Why did I take out five? <laughs> Why did I take out five? Uh, we have 25 purple, so let's take out 20. And then take out the rest of reds. But yeah, I've kind of expended all of my options here. There are no treasures. Actually, there is one treasure that I can get. Over, let's see, use this camera angle. There's a strawberry over there, which for some reason, I realized in post, I completely ignored. For some reason, I have no clue why. And uh, I'll get that later. Also, if I sound at all different to you, I'm just going to go right into the cave. Like I said, there's nothing else for me to do. If I sound at all different to you, it is because, if you follow my Twitter, then you already know this, but I am sick, or I'm recovering from being sick. Let's jump in. And so, it was just a 24-hour cold, or not 24 hours, it was more like 72 or 4 days, I can't do math. It was like a 4-day cold, and I'm just recovering from it now, and I have to record anyway, but... It was, uh, it was interesting. Thankfully it wasn't tonsillitis, or that one time I was sick in Okami that I constantly mention in, like, every single Let's Play. Alright, White Flower Garden. On the, the indicator for, for hazards, there was a hazard which we haven't, well, we've encountered it, but we don't have an immunity to, an immunity to. There is poison in this area, in this cave. And so I need to be really careful of these cheer grubs. Oh, there's another one. You can die. Kill him. Nice. Okay. The females don't bother me. It's just the males. Whoa. Hello. Lag? That was odd. That should not be happening. Is that it? Is that all this cave has to offer? A apparently. That's weird. But yeah, like I said, I have been sick. And it wasn't tonsillitis, it wasn't anything bad. But my voice will sound a little bit different, and if I... If you hear silence, then it's probably Future Pal muting my coughing. So hopefully I'll try to do that during map transitions instead of in the actual day. Alright, so we have some sh some Kiwi shoe polish here. Oh, that's something I should, I should probably demonstrate, because I just thought of it. So, yes, this is Kiwi Shoe Polish, but there's another thing about this area that's special. Alien Billboard. Alien Billboard, okay. Uh, gotta get that product placement in somehow. Not many people use Shoe Polish anymore. Okay, just to prove a point. If I go and enter a hole to go to another sub-level, while, uh... While there are Pikmin not in my party, they will actually come with me. Also, I need to be very careful when I when I do this because when I go to enter these holes, because if I'm not careful, I might throw a Pikmin off the edge when I press A, because it's the same button. Yeah, I need to be very careful of that. Delve deeper with your Pikmin, yes! If there is a Pikmin not in the party, he will not be left behind, actually. Which is something I need to get used to, but there are strategies around it. Say I, uh, I want to skip a bunch of enemies because there's no treasure on the floor or I got all of it. I can just go to the next area, next hole, press A, and everyone will come with me, and it's really nice. Alright. I kind of like having this treasure gauge, but I will admit that it's, it's pinging is kind of annoying. Okay, while they have that... Let's just explore this this circular area. What even is this area supposed to be? I mean, I want to say Durher, it's rustic, but also, what is it? 
It's underground, but it's scaffolding. It's odd. Petrified heart. That's kind of pretty. It's very reflective. It's a heart, and it's petrified. But what is this place? It's so weird. And it goes down forever. I mean, yes, it goes down forever, and that's a map design thing. But why does it go down forever? It's so odd. Huh. All right, so these are fiery blowhogs. They, as the name would suggest, they emit fire. Now, I need to be very careful about these things because the fire is not the only hazard they have. I need to get them to face me. There we go. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, bro. There you go. Let's use purples and... Kill him. Yes. If I allow Pikmin to get on top of him and hit him, then he will... He will rear back and then launch them forward, which that could be a bit hazardous to Pikmin health. Uh, let's just put some red Pikmin on this. Nice, four is exactly enough. What is this for? Doctor, oh, it's Dr. Pepper. Oh, that's neat. It's also a very old lid. All right, so there's another fiery blue hog, or as I affectionately call these guys, these are milk cartons. No, 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 no! Fire! Fire! Great camera angle. Emergency! Pikmin are suffering! If you blow your whistle with B, you may be able to help them! Well, please let me do that, because that's a purple. Do I have him? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, I want to be careful. That cutscene kind of messed me up there. Oh, he would have killed them, too. Kill them, yes. But yeah, do these guys not look like milk cartons? Because they're totally milk cartons. They're supposed to look like uh, balloons, but they're not. They're milk cartons. Also, I love my voice right now. Future Pal must be having a blast because it sounds absolutely awful. awful. Drought Ender. That's a, that's a name. Is that everything? Yes, it is. Neat. All right. Now, with those hazards out of the way, that was the first time we got to see fire. And that was exciting. Especially because I thought the cutscene might have killed my purple Pikmin. Okay, I'll do it like this. There we go. That way, if I throw the Pikmin, it will not die. Down to the next sub-level. Sub-level three. Wow, we're already here. Goodness. Also, you'd think that this would cause some serious tetanus issues. I mean, even with Olimar's suit, that would be bad. Look how sharp that is. You could just stub your toe, and then your toes could come off. Also, oh, 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 I forgot. I forgot. That is special to me. That diode right there. Because... There we go. That is considered a plant. And plants have entries in the Picklepedia even though you can't defeat them. And so, to get them to appear in the Piclopedia, you have to brush up against them. Hot brush. And that's what triggers it. How can such a flower so deep underground bloom so robustly? How mysterious. This place is conspicuously warm. Could it act as a kind of hothouse for foliage? What an interesting development. The Pikmin look as if they long to be tossed into the flower. These are ivory pellet posies. And you have to hand it. Oh, snap. You have to hand it to the developers. Because in no Pikmin game does it feel like there's a formula. Because in the first Pikmin game, we discover red Pikmin first. In this one, we also discover red, red Pikmin. Uh, although, I think the, the third one you don't. I don't think you discover red Pikmin first. And that makes it really cool. Okay. Let's get our 15 assumably white Pikmin from this ivory candy pop bud. Plural. There are multiples. Alrighty. Let's get our white Pikmin.
Aw, isn't it adorable? So cute. Incredible! A white Pikmin! It is tiny, but it looks distinctly swift. Its eyes are unseemly red. This type of Pikmin was not mentioned in your notes, Olimar. It must be an entirely new type. Our data record on this type is a blank page, since a certain captain never documented them. You must experiment and make detailed observations for the benefit of future generations! So white Pikmin, what a purple Pikmin isn't, or rather what a purple Pikmin is, these Pikmin are not. Purple Pikmin can carry more, they can fight better, but they move slower. These Pikmin move faster, and their, their strength in battle isn't through hitting enemies, it's through enemies hitting them. If these Pikmin are eaten, then they will poison the enemy, possibly even killing them outright. Now, I'm not a fan of killing off my Pikmin, because they're adorable, so we'll likely never be using that strategy, but it is a strategy that I have used in the past. You can, compl you can totally just kill off your Pikmin, your white Pikmin, in the name of defeating a boss or something. Okay, so... Let's get all of these Pikmin up in a group. Wiggle the sea stick in a circle, and nectar. That was bad. I barely got any. But they also move faster than normal variants. Even while leaf Pikmin, even while they're, they're leaves. Uh, and they also, let's see. Let's first flower them, then I can get to their other strength. All right, there we go. They also, can see underground. They have x-ray vision. And the other Pikmin are completely freaked out. Like, what are you doing? How did you know this was here? Are you psychic? Amazing! The white Pikmin have unearthed a treasure that was completely buried in the ground. Perhaps those beady red eyes of theirs allow them to sense objects buried in the dirt. And indeed they do. So these Pikmin are a little bit more niche than normal, but they are, they are pretty useful, uh, and they also have a, they have another strength that I'll be getting to a little bit later, because it would kind of spoil what we're getting in this this cave. But they have a pretty good strength that I'll, I will be getting to. Now they don't fight any better or any worse than normal variants. Uh, in fact, actually, technically, they're the first normal Pikmin we're getting for in terms of fighting power. Red Pikmin deal 1.5 times normal damage. Purples deal three times, and these guys deal a nice round one. Gamma Tape, and its name is Super Stick Textile. Not, not, not actually worth that much. Maybe it's because it's burnt in the ground. Buried in the ground, why did I say burnt? Also, I just noticed, that's a, a cool detail, that's electrical tape. Or, kind of, it's, it's a kind of weird variant of electrical tape. And also, with these Pikmin needing a warmer cave to grow, it makes sense that they would be in the kind of electronic themed area because there are diodes sticking out of the ground that would cause heat to, to radiate from them. So the electronic heat of things somehow still running after these thousands of years is heating these Pikmin and allowing life to flourish. Sub-level four. Oh. I thought this was actually the final floor, but it is not. And they're actually, wow, they're forcing us. They're straight up forcing us to, to use our white Pikmin here. Okay, is there anything in here? No. Okay, let's dismiss everyone and grab only the whites. Only the whites, be very careful. Ah, I can deal with 14. So this poison would normally cause a Pikmin to choke, but these Pikmin are fine. They can destroy the things spawning the poison. What even are those? They're pipes, yes, but what are they supposed to resemble? 
It's like a PVC thing with a wood covering. That's odd. All right, let's let's take these out first, and then move on. It's kind of interesting to see how the developers decided to make this game different from its predecessor, because if you think about the development time of this game, it's pretty short. I mean, the first Pikmin game probably had a development of, what, three, four years? Uh, it was one of the first things released on the GameCube. And... Come on. And then immediately after that, they had two or three years to develop this game. So it's kind of odd that they... What they what they decide to make different. Like, they have caves, so they have a, a, a system of dungeons, and then they have white Pikmin. And it's, just, it's interesting to see. The GameCube is kind of a weird period, if you think about it. Like, four sequels, and four... For Nintendo in general. Normally they would have a, a formula and they kind of I guess they kind of did previously, but it wasn't so much because you have like Super Mario through uh one, two, three, uh, and then a bunch of weird variants there in between. Toxic Toadstool, it's worth nothing, wow. But for but for Pikmin or for the GameCube, it was kind of odd. Because you had Pikmin 1, which is released, and then a couple years later, a sequel on the same console is released as well. And then, you have, let's see, you have Luigi's Mansion, which wasn't considered a series at that point, and, and to be fair, still quite isn't, because there are only two games. And it gets a sequel, or it's a Mario game that gets a sequel a little bit later in, in the console's life with Super Mario Sunshine. And then you have Zelda, where you have Wind Waker and Twilight Princess on the same console. The GameCube is just kind of weird. Sealed for your protection, says something else. And it has all the disclaimers on it. But, it's no Japanese, okay. And that's it? Really? Why is that everything? There's another... There's a whole big area here. Wow, that's... That's odd design there. So, I don't think I've gotten over it at this point because, honestly, we haven't encountered it yet, but one of the things that makes Pikmin 2 so replayable is the fact that these caves spawn in on a, a randomly generated layout. Uh, I believe the cave, like the overall cave map, is fairly set. There are only a, a small number of maps that the game chooses from, so those aren't completely randomized, but the item, or the treasure placement, the enemy placement, the enemy number, that can be randomized to some strange effects at times. And I think we just saw one of the examples of that, because we had a room that was completely empty. Like, there's nothing in it, no enemies, no treasures, nothing. And I don't think that, optimally, that's not what's supposed to, supposed to happen. Okay. So, we have a final floor, and while it's kind of been a, a rare occurrence thus far, because we're 50-50 at this point for encountering bosses in the final floor, that is the norm in Pikmin. And so, we're just taking reds in here. So, there's a boss here, and honestly, it's one of my least favorite bosses in the game. Here, before we before we encounter this thing are there any sprays no sprays okay so I I only have my ultra spicy spray to rely on let's encounter the burrowing snagret oh can I get some opening shots here oh yes I can cool no okay the burrowing snagret is a mean enemy and it requires some pretty good timing and actually, some impeccable reaction time. Oh, snap. Come on. Well, they're dead, but I might as well make their deaths worth it. Okay. So, at times, it will come out of the ground slower. Ah, lost one. It will come out of the ground slower than it normally does. It is at these times that... Oh, it's dead. Oh, we, we killed it. No, it's not dead. What? 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 Look at that health bar. Look at that health bar. Look at it. He's dead. Ah. Uh, 
Okay, well, I'm actually going to try and show this off then. Because this is normally how I like to beat the burrowing snagret. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, come on. Show this off. You're already dead. I'm, I'm giving you mercy here. Just do it. Okay, if it does, it'll die. There it is, there it is, there it is. So it'll come out of the ground slower than it normally does. And when that happens, it gives me a chance to swarm all of my Pikmin onto the head. Get a lot of damage off on it. But unfortunately, that's not how it ended up going down. And uh, we lost some Pikmin because of that. That's, that's fine, though. We're doing well in Pikmin already, so... Well done, Captain Olimar! You defeated that freakish half-bird, half-serpent hybrid. Oh no, don't tell me. That treasure was ingested by that beast, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was a glove. And this... Normally caves, or not all caves, give us upgrades to our gear. The last one did, however, and this one does as well. Actually, technically every cave thus far has given it, but not all of them do, if I recall. This will, as weird as it sounds, this does give us an upgrade. This is the five-man knapsack. And the upgrade it gives us actually benefits white Pikmin quite substantially. But we'll have to wait until it it gets in here and I get annoyed by the, the treasure gauge more. I didn't remember that thing being so annoying. Maybe it's because of my volume settings, but it's kind of kind of dumb. The five-man knapsack. Worth 100 pokos. This material looks comfortable. I will use it to patch the boss's favorite sleeping bag. Seam test conclusive. Cross-stitching successful. The knapsack is complete. When you have an unoccupied time interval, press X and hold, or press and hold X to take a nap. So this is an inadvertent buff to white Pikmin, because while this game doesn't have a feature where you can direct captains to go to different locations, it does have a feature that you, you can use to tell them to go back to base. By pressing and holding X, I'll fall asleep. And if there are Pikmin nearby, up to four will carry me back to base. If it's in a cave, it will be the ship. If it is a normal area, it'll just bring me back to base with an onion. And this is where white Pikmin are actually quite useful. Because they carry things faster than any other variant of Pikmin, even, I believe even while uh, under the effects of an ultra spicy spray, also I forgot to use my ultra spicy spray here. Oops. Then you can get uh, the captains back to base really quickly, and it's it's quite efficient actually. So it's a reason to have them in your party at all times, even if it's only a couple. And also the uh, the hazards that offer poison usually aren't threatening enough to merit you having a group of you know 100 white Pikmin. So what I can do is have maybe five, seven, ten in my party at a time just to help carry things back to base. And also, if there are ever any hazards, they can deal with them, and I don't need a ton of them to deal with those hazards. So they're not necessarily the most broken variant of Pikmin, but they're also, they're not useless either. They're fairly useful, but for different reasons than the purple Pikmin are. Power them up, and okay, get a cutscene. Kaioken! Times 10! Astounding! The heads of the Pikmin are glowing, and they seem to be extremely agitated! Captain Olimar, I have completed my research on the purple berries you discovered. Behold, the Ultra Bitter Spray! It's untested, but I believe it will be highly effective. Approach enemies and press up on the D-pad to spray them. 